Okay. Memories of elementary school. I had a slight learning disability when I was in elementary school. A little uh, motor skill disorder. Coordination, basically, and it was cured by going swimming and doing craft things and it kind of improved the hand-eye thing. I also never can write very well. Still can't. Never could. So they got me this special fancy pencil. And we're talking 1976 approximately. So sixth grade. And it was just a, an automatic pencil. I mean, with lead in it. It just wasn't a wooden pencil. It's one of those you can put new, new lead in uh, when it runs out. Except it had this fancy grip on there to help me hold my pencil properly so Stephen can write legibly. Well, it didn't help, but I still have crappy handwriting. But anyway, I should have been a doctor. Most doctors have illegible handwriting. Anyway, I was teased mercilessly about that, and we had for our homeroom teacher for sixth grade, Miss Ann Veller, a southern lady from Virginia. Kind of an older light. Of course, when you're in sixth grade, anybody who's like 40 seems ancient. <laughs> so she could have been in her 50s, I guess. She was a very strict, old school kind of teacher. Our sixth grade classroom was also the school library. So we sat at these desks with the old fashioned, it had two seats attached to the desk, bolted to the floor, and it had a giant, um, two lids. Uh, desktops that you could lift up and you stored your books and all your crap in there. So she did math with us too. In addition to most other subjects, we only left the room for music class, for science, and for social studies, I think. Anyway, or art or something like that anyway. It was a long time ago. And my memory ain't so good now, lad. So one day we had this math problem, uh, and of course I got called to the board, the shyest child in the class, and I hated it. I hated going up in front of the class, um, and I couldn't get the problem right, and the teacher kind of chastised me a little bit in front of the other kids. And it feels like a spotlight is on you, you know, everybody's, everybody's you know, looking at you and you're afraid. So I did the cardinal sin against Miss Ann Veller. We had these long, pointy fingers and fingernails, manicure fingernails that long, it seemed like. She would poke you and say, rah, 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 rah. So nobody ever talked back to her, and that was like the, the worst thing you could do is talk back to her. And everybody in the class was like, oh my god! He actually has a voice, and he's not afraid of his own shadow 100% of the time. <laughs> I was so shy. So that's why it freaked everybody out. And she she was kind of shocked that I ever said anything back to her. Don't talk back to me! How dare you! So she, I started crying. I got so upset. And she dragged me out in the hall practically by my ear. Come on, you! Why I ought to... And... She told me, you know, don't be so dramatic. Don't do that. You're not supposed to talk back to your elders and your teachers. Then your mama treat you right, teach you right. I should send you to the principal. There's another story. Mr. Rimmel, our principal of Columbian Elementary School in Denver, Colorado, where I still am. Okay, there was this story about him that he had a paddle hanging on the wall from a hook. Okay, we thought this story was bullshit. Until one time, dun dun dun, I actually had to go to the principal's office. And it was true. He had a fraternity paddle hanging on the wall. And the, the, the rumor was that if you're a bad child, I mean truly a screw up, that Mr. Riddle would paddle you. Corporal punishment was still allowed back in the 1970s. 
Okay, what I had done that day was not a, serious enough to get a paddling or even a note home. But, of course, you know, the legendary child being afraid to go to the principal's office because you don't know, oh, my mother's going to spank me when I get home, and da 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 So, anyway, anyway, <clears throat> had to change batteries. Uh, yeah, you never talk back to your teachers, you don't. I was the shyest, afraid of my own shadow child ever. I mean, I never got in trouble in school except that one time. It wasn't even trouble. They all felt for me because I was such a, a wamp, a queen in training. Well, at least a half sister. So there's my story about my childhood uh, going to elementary school days. I have way more stories. I am now inspired. So the moral to the story is, you young bastards don't disrespect your elders. I'm an elder now. Respect my authority. Lord, I'm worried about the beaver.